What's up, Divas and Devo? So it's your girl. You guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. And I thought I'd actually just leave the scenery the way it is. You know, it's Real Talk. It's my room. We're here. We're chit-chatting. We're doing a Real Talk girl thing. And also, I have to get ready to um, leave tomorrow. So I really didn't want to pull out the backdrop and... You know, I just didn't want to do too much, so I decided we're just going to leave it all natural. You know, like how I'm looking right now, my look goes with the background, you know, not done. So anyway, um, yes, I'm leaving tomorrow for New York, and um, first I go to New York City. I'm going on a world tour. No, I'm just fucking with y'all. I'm not going on no damn world tour. I'm just going, I'm going, you know, back home. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see, so I hope you guys heard me because I didn't have my mic my microphone on. Um, first thing I'm going to go do is see my mom and I'm going to be with her in New York City for a week. And then um, I'm going to go where I used to live at, back up, um, which is upstate New York, to see my son, my grandson, my daughter-in-law, and my husband. You guys know him as my ex-husband, but you know, we are engaged. So my soon to be husband again for the second time around. So that's what I've been doing today. I've been just getting ready, um, going, you know, grocery shopping and just getting some groceries and, um, while I'm not here and, um, what else did I do today? Had to go to the Dollar Tree, get a couple things, you know, like little travel size bottles, you know, I got those because I listen, first of all, I'm not about to take no, um, suitcase that you have to pay for, you know, that goes underneath the plane. I'm not going to carry one of those because I think it's like $75. Um, I take me a carry along bag, um, like, you know, carry on, carry along suitcase. And I could fit, uh, I could fit enough clothes in there for the two weeks. Now, mind you, I could fit even more now because it's nice outside. So the clothes are less bulky. So, you know, and then I have my book bag too. So, a girl is not about to be paying no extra. And plus, last time I did that, um, then I did go for two, um, I went for 10 days. I took along a regular, you know, suitcase. And with Southwest, you don't have to pay. So I took that along and um, I didn't even wear half the shit that I brought along with me. And so this time I'm flying American Airlines, which I have flown for the past like three months now because they're cheaper. But the thing you have to do is you have to pay for your bigger suitcase if you have to put it underneath the plane. Let me tell you something. Southwest is really not cheaper. Their prices are more because they try to fool your ass because the suitcases, the luggage is included. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, a girl has gotten over and knows how to do it. And um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, my flight leaves at 5 a.m. So by the time y'all watch this, I'll already be there because it's Monday. And I leave on Tuesday, so it's Monday, and um, it's about to storm outside. It's really like raining hard, and I'm happy about that because it never barely, it never rains here in Arizona. Like it does, but it don't rain like that. So yeah, I went to the Dollar Tree, I went to the 99 cents only store, I went to the post office to you know ship out some wigs, and I went to Walmart, and that's about it. So here I am, and I do got some real talk for you guys. That's about all. Um, that's about it. I really haven't been into much of anything, still not sleeping properly because I just like to get my work done. Um, and that's about it. I haven't really gotten into anything. You know, I think like for the past few weeks, my life has been good, meaning ain't no drama. I ain't got to be going off on none of my kids, um, or worry about any of my kids. Um, you know, still on my weight loss thing. Um, now, I did go down to, I, I did lose some weight. I actually went down to, like, again, to 189 and went back up to 192. I, I guess I'm supposed to just stay at 192. But, um, uh, yeah, I haven't really been into anything too much. So we're just going to get into this real talk right now because I really do need to finish packing. And I do want to edit some videos prior to me leaving so that way they could be uploaded. And I don't have to do them while I'm chilling with my mom. So I do want to do that. So we're going to get into this real talk. If you guys have a real talk that you need to be discussed, make sure to send it to me because I'm so happy that I did get some real talks this week, three of them. And because girls, I had caught up, I was running low. And like I said, now I don't know about next Wednesday if I'm going to have a real talk because, you know, um, I just don't know. 
I will try to, um, but I'm not sure. If I don't have a real talk up next Wednesday, that just is because I'm on vacation. But I will try to, okay? But yeah, if you have a real talk issue, go ahead and send me that to, um, to my email address, which is down below. Muffin is my lovers, 2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the names of the characters or the people that are, you are referring to in your real talk, you can say, hey, hey, April, I've changed the names already, or I don't care about the names not being changed or vice versa. But you know what? We're going to get into this. Um, I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you guys enjoyed your 4th of July. I thank everybody for all the warm and loving 4th of July messages. You know what's so funny, though? Okay, so we did go to see the fireworks. We was going to go to um, the baseball field in Goodyear, Arizona. And we did. We did drive over there. And let me tell y'all, the crowd was so thick, meaning... While we were driving there, you seen people parked out. I mean, when I say people, there was loads of people parked on the side of the road. Like when I say road, we don't have like where this was at in particular, there wasn't any sidewalks. So like it was like dirt roads or like grass roads. So you seen people with their trucks or their cars parked alongside because, you know, you could see the fireworks show from there. And I really wanted to go to the ballpark because I wanted to bring Tinky so he can see it. Um, but when I realized that there were so many people on a side and I said to myself, April, do you really, really, really want to go into the ballpark and try to find a seat at this time now? Because the fireworks started at nine. So by the time we got there, it was like 820. So, you know, a bitch was late, like dumb late. I should have got there when it started at six o'clock. You know what I'm saying? But I really didn't want to be in the ballpark for that long because, for one, it's, it's hot as hell out here. And what am I going to do at the ballpark? Sit there and wait? I'm not about to sit in no fucking sun and eat hot dogs and shit. Like, I'm not about to sit there and eat hot dogs all day. So I figured out we would go around a decent time. And it's just like a 15-minute drive from my house. So and when I drove past the ballpark, I did see the lines. I said, you know something? You don't have to be right there in the stadium to see the fireworks. So we, we parked right in the dirt. Um, I opened up the back of my truck and we all sat back there. And the fun, the best part of the 4th of July for me was watching my grandson, my three-year-old Tinky Man grandson. He, I have never seen a kid so excited in their life about some fireworks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he just, the first thing he said when he first seen it go up, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. I'm, I was like, we just all stopped what he's doing and was just looking at him laughing because it was like the cutest thing. And every firework that went up, he was just like overexcited. So to me, that was my fireworks right there. Just watching him was like perfect. Like he enjoyed himself so much until the end when it was time to leave, he would not let me put him in the car. Um, my daughter, his mom, she was like, you have to get in the car. You have to get in the car. No more fireworks. The next day we're going to go see the fireworks. That's just like with Halloween. We're going to go trick or treating. It's, get some candy like we can't go knocking on people's doors now asking for stuff like that's not gonna work but he had like the best time and like you know fourth of july is just average to me you know i was cleaning my house and i was redoing my bedroom well not my bedroom excuse me my bathroom and um because my mother my mom she's such a sweetheart she and I, when she was here visiting, she and I went to Ikea. She had never been to Ikea. And the one in New York is kind of far from her. It's probably like an hour and a half, two hour drive on public transportation. So, um, I think she said you have to take like three buses or two buses and a train, something like that, you know? So she didn't want to really go to the one where she lives at in Queens. So we drive to this one out here in Tempe and it's like a 40 minute drive. And we spent the entire day there because you guys, if you've ever been to Ikea, it's huge. You got so much to do and look at. And like, I actually like to go there, not even to buy stuff, but you know what I'm saying? I just like to go there to look around and walk around because I love like the displays that they make, you know, and I just like, I do like some of the things that they have. I'm not like a big fanatic on like couches and things of that nature from there because it, they're just cheaply made and they're just not the type of furniture, like living room furniture that I would, you know, use, but like certain things I do like, like the shelves, the storage, you know what I'm saying? Certain things I do like from Ikea that they have that's really good. And you know, it's, it's, it's like, okay quality, but it's fairly priced. It's like price really low. So anyway, um, we go there and we're in the um section where there's, where the desks are at. Now, mind you, I have two Ikea desks in my bedroom already. One is in my bathroom 
and one is in my bedroom that sits in front of me. And they're they're both exactly the same. They're identical. They're both exactly the same. They're the white desk. Um, I don't. They look like they would go with the Alex drawers, but um, they have two drawers, and then they have um, I don't know if it's called the mica or something like that, but I have two of them, and they're both white. So you know, um, because everything in my room is white, and my bathroom is like white with red um detailing. So I have that in my bathroom. So, you know, my mom knows that I love pink and we walk by and there's this desk and it's so freaking gorgeous. It's like this baby doll pink. And on top of it is like this metal shelf that you can actually purchase with the desk or you can just purchase it separately. And the desk also comes in white. But we didn't even see the white one. I didn't see a white one. I just was drawn to that pink one. And the legs of the desk are like raw iron and they just come out really pretty. It's like this light baby pink. So I'm like, that is so pretty. I really, really like this desk. And But mind you, when I say I like something, doesn't necessarily mean that I want it or I'm going to get it. I just really liked it, you know. And um, now she was like, that's nice. I said, I should get that. I said, I, I, that would probably look nice in my room. So, you know. We didn't think nothing of it. We walk away. Now, on my birthday, which was just passing on the 19th of June, she sends me a text message with a photo, from a screenshot photo from Ikea of that desk with the like the shelf on top of it. Did she have the desk delivered to me? She shipped it out to me, which was great. I was so excited. I almost cried. You know, she's basically was like, you know, I said, you know, mom, you don't have to do that. She said, well, you do so much for everyone else. You never do anything for yourself. So I just thought that, um, you know, you would like this. So I um got the desk and the desk didn't have any drawers. Now, mind you, it was shorter in length than my actual desk that I already have, but wider in width. So I went and bought one of the Alex drawer systems from Ikea and I had it delivered. I didn't feel like driving 40 minutes to go get it. So I just had it delivered. It was only, um, I had it shipped to me. It was only $9 shipping and my mom paid the same thing too, which was fairly cheap because if you have their asses deliver you some furniture from the store, that's just like $75. So I had it delivered and me and my daughter, Nay, we put the table, the desk together first, and then we put the Alex drawers together and we came and says, and we brought it. First of all, I was so like, not disappointed, but I was just like a little bit upset because the way the legs are on the actual table, the desk, you couldn't even put the, um, you could put the Alex drawers underneath it. Cause I made sure to make sure that the desk was tall enough, but I couldn't put it on either corner of the desk because the way the legs are made, it would have stopped the drawers from opening. So the Alex drawer had to be kind of like almost dead smack in the center of the desk. Then I would be sitting on the far corner. So it really didn't work out. I didn't want the Alex drawer on the opposite side, outside of the desk, because I'm just so funny. Like, I don't want the pink and white to mix like that. It has to be underneath. And plus, the desk was so, it was wider in width. So it kind of like, it didn't take up too much more space, but it just really didn't work out for me. So I, what I did was I took the shelf and I put it um. I took the shelf from it, the raw iron shelf that goes with it, and it's so pretty. And I used that on, on top of my makeup desk. And then I took the Alex drawer system and I put it underneath my original desk. But I had to kind of like work around that. I had to take one of the drawers out of the desk and just put the drawer in the garage and not use it, which was fine because that one drawer really wasn't serving much of a purpose to me because I had all of these freaking, um, you know, those acrylic things. I had a really huge one, the Diva one, that's two of them. I had two of them stacked on top of each other. Then I had a bunch of small ones. So that desk, that drawer was not really serving a purpose. So, you know, I took it out. It looks really cute. I'll definitely have to show you guys. And then I went and got um a, a, um, a metal shelf to put all like my hair care products. I'll definitely have to show you guys. Hopefully I'll remember um, because I'm always forgetting something, but you know, if I do forget, I'll, I'll definitely post on Instagram. So the desk is actually going to my daughter, Nay, because she loved it. And so she's going to put that in her room and the shelf, I have the shelf part to it, but the cool thing about it is they do shelf itself separately. So I'll give her back the shelf and I'll buy a white one instead to match mine. But yeah, that was what I did for my birthday. And, um, that's about it. So, or for the past week, last week, but other than that, we're going to just get into this real talk. Okay. Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 Dam
Sure. All right, you guys. So let's get into this. <clears throat> Dear Miss April. Hello, Miss April. First off, let me start by saying you are my role model because I watch you every day on YouTube so that I can free my mind of everybody else and their negativity. So first, I want to say thank you, Diva. That's cool to know that you're somebody's role model, even if I have a potty mouth. But you know what? I'm still a good person, though. See, you are so straight up and outspoken that you can embrace various real talk situations without passing judgment on those of us who are facing hardships. I'm talking to you today, hoping to share my own real talk situation with you. I am changing the names. Let's call the man that I'm having sex with Vince, 45, and my name is going to be Lynette, 25. It was 2015 when I met Vince, okay? I was, get, I was going to have a Section 8 inspection. I was very excited because this is my first apartment I was ever given. I guess it was so obvious that I was excited that the inspector Vince vented to me about how he was feeling about his last relationship and how he was talking to this girl for 15 years before he moved her in. Vince then felt he should sit down and let me know he was willing to take me out. I showed my son to Vince. He was always making different remarks on what I should and shouldn't be teaching my son, who was a year and a half old at the time. I thought that I was doing the right thing as a single mother. I felt like Vince might have been the reason why my son wasn't behaving the same during the time that this inspection was being conducted. However, I felt like regardless of him rejecting my son being introduced to him, I want to talk to Vince about going out so that it would have so that it wouldn't have appeared as though he had been as worried and concerned. Although this was stopping me from finding a sense of serenity. I talked to Vince more and more over time. As time went by, we became a lot closer than we were on the day we met. He was always sending me good morning messages, and I can't handle having to wake up in the morning without reading his text. Okay. When we would talk to one another, Vince always acted condescending and controlling, though. For example, he told me I was being hardcore and running things because I decided to clean his shower after we got out of it. When he said that I felt very confused because I felt as though he had been trying to intimidate me, I let him know that I wanted to feel comfortable about being myself around him. He is putting unrealistic expectations on me, I feel. Until then, we talked about how we should use our own thinking. After that, I asked him what gave him that impression about me, and he said it was the way I spoke to him. He even started to act like he didn't want to take me home. He made me feel like he was sending me mixed signals. I tried to talk things out between the two of us, but Vince knows that my relationship with my father is a very distant relationship. I don't even know why Vince only seems to be interested hearing in the bad experiences that I have with my son. I offered to lend him some money. He told me he wanted to go to the mechanic shop with the money. I offered to go with him just as moral support. He came up with this whole story about how he didn't know how he was supposed to get his car fixed and pick me up from my house because timing was going to become just too consuming for him. I said, okay. He didn't even want to pay me back my $300 either. I've become so emotionally dependent on him though. However, I keep giving and get this guy what however i keep giving and this guy seems to just keep taking does he really think i'm supposed to be allowing him to treat me like i'm less than what should i do now that me and vince can't seem to get along anymore i can't be in love already because it has only been three and a half years and it is way too early i find it very interesting that vince will only text me during the week but once the weekend comes around he won't even text or call me Miss April, you always know just what to do. So even if my situation doesn't make real talk, can you please email me back about this whole thing? I hope to hear back from you soon. I wish you all the best in your business endeavors. Thank you for your time and consideration. God bless. We're going to call her Lynn. And she is so cute with her pretty smile. Oh, I love to see people smiling, like with their teeth showing. And you know, you know something, you guys, have you... I don't know, but maybe it's just me because I, I try not to let like bad vibes get to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I try to just stay away from people and they drama and they bullshit. And like, I guess when you become older, 
like I ain't old, but you know what I'm saying? But but when you come older in life, you know, you just try to avoid all type of drama and bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm just not into all of that shit no more. Like, I mean, if you approach me and you were to fight, I mean, I'm not really trying to stand out here and embarrass myself, but if you put hands on me, oh, we're about to throw down. But, you know, I'm not trying to be out here arguing in public or just being part of drama and beef. Like, you know why? I got too many things that's more important in life than just drama and bullshit. So I guess that's like another reason why like I don't have friends because some people do what they like to do and I like to do what I like to do. And like maybe my life is boring to others, but I just try to avoid a lot of shit. And like, I like the things that I like to do. So I just kind of like put my whole self into my family and just being here in my home. You know what I'm saying? I don't got time to be out club hopping and shit like that and getting drunk. But whatever the case is, I just think like as we get older, we start to do and we learn more about ourselves and, and people in general. We start to treat people differently. And like I noticed like like with her smile, with Lynn's smile, you ever notice that when you can see you look at a person's picture and you can tell like when a, what's a fake smile and what's a real smile. Like when I mean fake smile, like, you know. You just smiling for the camera, like maybe you're modeling something. So this is not like you're not really portraying true happiness. But like with her smile, I can see like the the happiness in her face. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you know I like her picture. She's so cute, and she got little glasses on, and her smile is just like so like you know what I'm saying, infectious. Like you see somebody and they smile like this, you feel like you want to smile because you can tell that they're really happy. So. From her picture, she looks happy just because of her smile. But from her email, I see that she's a little bit upset. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so basically, Lynn has been messing with this guy for a little bit over three years. And she's like, can't she be in love? Because it hasn't even been long. It's only three years. Bitch, it's three years. Yes, you could be in love. You could fall in love with somebody without, within a week. So there's no time frame or no time limit on falling in love with somebody. However, Mr. Vince needs to take his ass and go some fucking where. First of all, Lynn, you got a son. Now, at the time, he was one and a half. Now, you got this man. He was an, He's an inspector for Municipal Housing Authority for Section 8. So, she has Section 8, and don't nobody judge nobody about no Section 8 because the bitch used to have Section 8, too. And I wish they would give me that shit right now. But, you know, I can't get it, but whatever. So, kudos to her because it is like people do go through shit in life. Everybody goes through some shit in life. Regardless of how much money you got, you go through some shit in life, whether it be financial, hardship, relationships, family, whatever. Everybody goes through some shit in life. So, we don't need to be judging people. So, I'm not here to judge her, but what I'm here to do is to tell her this. So she got with the guy, you know, Lynn had her Section 8 inspection due. It was her first apartment. She was excited about it. And I feel her because that's how I was when I had my first apartment. I was so excited about it, you know. It's it's overwhelming to have something of your own, but you're very happy. Regardless of what you have, it's yours, you know what I'm saying? So Vince came, you know, he had to check out the, you know, the dwellings, make sure the refrigerator was running properly, the lights, the smoke detector, all of that good shit. Yes, a bitch know because, like I said, I was on Section 8 at the time. So, I guess her happiness rubbed off on him, and he felt like he was able to sit down and talk to her about the relationship that he was in with a young lady for 15 years. And after 15 years, he finally decided to move her in. Now, first of all, not Lynn, but the girl prior to Lynn. If I'm with you for 15 years and after 15 years you decide to finally move me in, nigga, we're not even going to be together. I'm not about to sit around and wait for nobody to move me the fuck in after 15 years. What the fuck? But maybe it was on both parties, you know what I'm saying? But I just think this. From day one, he had no business telling you how you should run your one and a half year old child. Like, who the fuck are you? Just go fix some fucking ceiling fans and light bulbs, motherfucker. Or write that down so that the landlord could fix that shit. Don't be over here telling me what I need to fix in my parenthood. And I don't even know you. And on top of that, you know what I'm saying? She didn't like his condescending and controlling ways. However, Lynn, you continue to go over to his home. You, you continue to have a relationship with him. Three years? Like, maybe you meant to write three weeks because you said it was early. I'm not really sure. But he's 45, you're 25. There's a 20-year difference. He's my age, okay? I'm 44 years old. You're my son's age, all right, who is about to be 26 years old. 
I'm not, I'm not saying it's not going to work, but people that are more older like myself, we're kind of settled and set in our own way. So when we date somebody, like not we, because I ain't dating nobody, but my husband, he's four years younger than me. But when we're with somebody that is like way younger, like in their 20s, we are already set in our ways. And some things that 20 year olds do may strike us in the wrong possible way because we don't already did that 20 something years ago and we're not about that life right now you know what i'm saying so that may be a reason why he's so condescending however still doesn't give him the right to be kind of like trying to judge you and your son now the one thing that would have thrown me off and i wouldn't even want it to be bothered with him is the fact that when you have a kid you are a package motherfucking deal okay you either going to have to accept me and my son or you don't have to accept no one. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you cannot accept my children, then I guess me and you are not going to be anything of that nature. Like, I'm not fucking with you if you can't accept my son. And like she said in the email, he wasn't accepting to her son. Like, and all he wants to hear about basically is like bad things. He likes to hear or talk about the bad things about her life or her son's life. Like, that to me is like, so you like negativity, but the red flag is this. If he wasn't accepting to your child, sweetheart, you shouldn't have fucked with him in general. That's the number one rule. Because he has to accept you and he has to accept your child. And if he can't do that, then you know what? He's not worth your time. He's definitely not worth your time. You have a kid. Your kid is way more important than anybody else on the face of this earth next to yourself. So I'm not about to have no man around my son or me that don't accept my child. Like, that's just not about to happen. But you continued on with the relationship with him, and then this nigga is borrowing money from you, okay? And then he's acting all shady and shit. And who the fuck gets mad about cleaning out a shower? So her and the guy got in the shower together because she said when we got out. Now, I don't know if they got in at the same time. However, they got in the shower, okay? And when she and he got out, she decided to clean the shower. He got, like, upset about that. Like, who the fuck gets upset about cleaning out a shower, like, so you're a dirty bird. You don't want to clean the shower. You don't want to clean the tub. Like that would have said a lot to me. Like, nigga, you dirty. Cause like, if you don't like to wash the shower out, that means the next time I may come around, you want to have all kind of dirt scuds marks in your fucking tub. And like, I find that to be so disgusting. Like seriously, I have been to people's homes and I have seen they like you washing that shit. You run, a, and I know that's fucking bath water because it's going around the tub. So that's a bathtub ring. It's not a shower ring. It's a bathtub ring. So you just and you just keep rebathing in that shit. Like I don't know. I don't. First of all, I don't even like to get in bathtubs and and bathe because I just feel like it's just dirty. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. It's something about it. I just I, as a kid, I love to be in a bathtub, but as an adult, I don't I don't want to be in a bathtub because I just don't want to be bathing in my own dirty water. But I know you can get out and take a shower, but that's just me. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's me. But either here nor there. Um, let me tell you something. He borrowed three hundred dollars. First of all, here. First of all, let's just get back to this. Section eight is for those who have lower income. Okay. That's what Section 8 is for. Section 8 is for those who have lower income. What the fuck makes this nigga decide that he can ask her for $300 to get his motherfucking car fixed when you got a job at municipal housing, making money? You work for the city. Who the fuck are you be asking this young lady for $300? And she's a single mother on top of that. And you don't even barely like her kid. But... He had some nerve to be asking you for $300 when you live in a rent-controlled environment. You know what I'm saying? Section 8 helps you pay your rent, which means you have low income. Now, I don't know if she works or not. It doesn't matter if she works or not. The fact is she has Section 8, which means that her income is low. And who the fuck are you to be asking her for money? If anything, nigga, you should be one to give her some motherfucking money, some help. You know what I'm saying? Be a man. You 45 years old asking this 25-year-old single mother who is getting help to pay her rent for 300 fucking punk ass dollars. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't have a car because he did say, well, if I have to come pick you up to go pick my car, to get my car fixed, then that's going to mess up the timing. So she may not have her own transportation. That was him taking advantage of the situation, taking advantage of you as a woman, because he probably felt like you were vulnerable to him and you were in love with him. And he felt like he can use you. And on top of that, so he calls you during Monday through Friday, 
or Monday through Thursday, but once the weekend gets here, he don't call you. You know what I'm saying? Not a text message, not a phone call, not a song, not a bouquet, not an email, no nothing. No DM on the social media, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? That right there would have me thinking like, hmm, is this nigga partying all weekend and fucking bitches and don't want me to know about it and he don't want to be around me? Or is he living some other type of lifestyle? Either way, let me tell you something, sweetheart. If it's if you've been with him three years, three months, three weeks, either way, it's too long. It's way too long. Now, you in this email are basically telling me that he's condescending and controlling. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even want to pay me back my three hundred dollars. I become so emotionally dependent on him. However, I keep giving this I keep giving and this guy seems to just keep taking. Yeah, he's taking, okay, Lynn, because you're allowing him to keep fucking taking. You know what I'm saying? Like if you allow somebody to do something, they're going to keep doing it. I mean, like, listen, I'm going to use this for example. If I knocked on one of you guys' doors, one of you ladies' doors, and said, hey, it's me, Muffin, is my lovers, you know. I I don't have nowhere to stay. I don't got no place to stay. Can me, I'm going to just say me. Can I come and stay with you for a minute? You know what I'm saying? For a while so I get back on my feet. you like, oh, yeah, girl, come on in. Come on in. Come on and stay. Now, now I've been there for months. When I say months, I've probably been there for like five, six months. I don't do shit. I don't clean. I don't cook. I don't pay you for shit. I just sit around, be on my phone, maybe be on my laptop, but just do the shit that I want to do, basically. You know what I'm saying? And you've been sitting around for five months now, April, and you ain't been doing shit. You ain't even trying to get it together. Do you really motherfucking think that um, I'm going to do... And you And you... As the host, the owner of the place ain't saying nothing to me. You're just allowing me to do this. And you cooking me meals every day when you get home from work. And you just washing my clothes and cleaning up after me. And you don't even care if I'm not giving you no money. I've seen you do this for five, six months now. And you ain't said a thing. You ain't complained to me or nothing about it. So why would I want to change it up? I mean, like, I mean, hey, like, I'm enjoying, I'm living my best life right now. I got me like a maid, kind of like I got a maid, a servant that I'm living with, and I don't got to pay for shit. Like, who the fuck wants to pay for shit? Like, if you are going to allow me to live and mooch off of you, I guess I will just live and mooch off of you. That's not, but when I say this, I mean, I'm using that as an example, because that's not me as a person. But there are people that are like that, that use you for whatever the fuck you have. And as long as you allow them to, they are going to continue to. Let me tell you something. If you keep giving this nigga money, he ain't going to take it. Bitch, if you gave me some money, I'm going to put it in my motherfucking pocket. Well, I probably wouldn't because, you know what I'm saying? I just wouldn't. But there are people that would, and he's one of them. So basically, he's using you. And he's going to continue to use you until you allow him to. He's going to get the kitty cat. He's going to get the fucking funds. And then when it's time for your inspection, he's going to fucking come over there and inspect your fucking walls, ceiling fans, smoke alarms, stoves, refrigerator, and whatever the fuck, fuck else you got to inspect. But meanwhile, on the weekend, the nigga's not even going to contact you. That nigga don't know you on the weekends. Girl, bye, please. Who? Lynn who? Lynn? I don't know no Lynn. I probably met her before as inspecting her home, but I don't, I'm, I don't know no Lynn personally like that. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I not say this plenty of times. Nobody wants to be the fuck alone. Who the fuck want to be alone? Maybe there are some people in the world that don't want to be in a relationship or don't want to be with anybody or want to just be alone. That's fine. But I'm pretty sure that the people that don't want to be alone versus the people that do want to be alone and not bother outweigh the people that do want to be alone and not bother okay you know what i'm saying like there are more people that do not want to be alone versus those who want to be left the fuck alone all right everybody anyone wants love who doesn't want to be loved accepted into you know what i'm saying love accepted nourished cared for you know what i'm saying treated like a queen or a king or just somebody that's special to them who don't want that you know what i'm saying who don't I know I would if I was in that predicament. I I I do. I get mine, but you know what I'm saying. But if I was in that situation, of course, you know what I'm saying. I would. And when you become so vulnerable to when when that is so obvious to a man that you want love really bad and you want to be accepted really bad, that you will put your kid on the sideline. You know what I'm saying. And you will accept the fact that he's not really accepting to your kids. That shows that you are vulnerable and. 
that's going to allow him to fucking pray on you. Not pray like, let's Lord, thank you for this food you're about to eat. No, pray on you like a motherfucking tiger in the goddamn jungle. Praying on that little deer that's that's, that's over there in the, in the trees eating, okay? That's what he's praying on your ass. He is praying on you, okay? You the prey, baby. You are the motherfucking prey. And I say this because he's allowing you to give him money. He's taking it from you. You keep giving and he keep taking. I'm not going to keep giving you shit and I'm not getting nothing in return. You ain't even giving me no real respect like that because you're so condescending and controlling. And then you act like you don't want to take me home. Let me tell you something, honey. Men come a dime a dozen and so do fucking men, women, okay? Dick comes a dime a dozen and so does pussy. I don't give a fuck how good the dick may be or how good the pussy is. I'm not about to sit around and allow you to take over, walk over, use me for every little fucking thing I have. I'm not about to do that. I don't give a fuck how good that shit is, okay? I don't give a fuck if you eat pussy for two hours, nigga. You're not about to use me for what the fuck I got, okay? Trust and believe. That's not happening. As much as I love you, I'm still not going to allow you to fucking use me. So here's the thing. You keep giving and he keep taking. Sweetheart, you into him. He not into you. If the nigga was really into you, bitch, he would call you on the fucking weekends. How you gonna not call somebody that you fucking with? Who does that? Like, on the weekends. Only on the weekends. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna fucking call you on the weekends. That would have been a red flag to me the first time you did the shit like, Oh, it's Monday and you calling me now? What the fuck you calling me now for? That's me. That's me. That, that's, that's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I would do it. You're not about to go every fucking weekend and not call me. I mean, like, did you ever ask him why he don't call you on the weekend? And if you did, what kind of fucking lame ass excuse did he give you? Let me tell you something, Lynn. As long as you allow the nigga to use you and take money from you, he gonna do it. He gonna do it. That's, that's, that's human nature. That's not just to being a man. That's human nature. And as long as you seem vulnerable to him, bitch, he gonna walk all over you like you a fucking doormat. You gonna be, you are a motherfucking doormat to this motherfucker. And your son is nothing but a little, you know, he's nothing, basically. Your son is really nothing to this man. Like I said, the first situation where he didn't want to be accepting to my child would have been like, no bueno, nigga. No motherfucking bueno, okay? I don't give a fuck if he was an inspector and he was like, oh, you don't want to go out with me? I'm not inspected. I'm failing everything. Let me tell you something. I'll be, so first of all, how dare he come to your home on his time of duty while he's at work and try to kick it with you and ask you on a fucking date? Isn't that against regulations for working for municipal housing? Because I think so. You're not supposed to do some shit like that. That's so unprofessional. Okay? So out of line and so unprofessional. That right there would have been a red flag to me. Like, yo, dude, just come and fucking check on my smoke alarms and stove and shit and keep it moving. Because I don't even want to see it. Me, when I used to get the Section 8 inspectors, I mean, like, they were older white guys. So they wasn't trying to talk to me. But... I didn't even want them coming in my house. I just didn't want them coming in my house. Just hurry up and get them fucking past me and, and get the fuck out. Or if not, what's wrong so I can have the landlord fix it? I, You know what I'm saying? And if, Lord have mercy, if he was to do some shit like that, if that was to happen to me, I would probably look at him like I had two motherfucking heads. Like, are you out your motherfucking rabbit ass mind? You come here to inspect my house, not try to inspect my motherfucking walls. You know which walls I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that you, he is treating your son like he doesn't even belong wouldn't be me, sweetheart. Let me tell you something. Like I said, dick come a dime a dozen. You can go out there and buy you some motherfucking dick. You can go out there and find you a new man. Or you can be stuck in this fucking toxic relationship with this man who don't give two fucks about you or your son. I wouldn't care if he loved me until the day I was dead and he didn't like my son. I don't give a fuck. Then you don't like me, really. You don't care for me, really. Being in love, Lynn, is a totally different feeling. If you were in love, you wouldn't have to fucking email me all of this shit. If you were in love with this guy, you would not be telling me that he takes and takes and takes, how he doesn't call you on the weekend, how he's condescending and controlling, how he doesn't like your son, how he likes to hear only negativity about your life 
or your relationships or your child's life. Like, you know what I'm saying? How he likes to borrow money and not give it back. If you're in love, you would have never wrote me that email and told me all of that shit. Okay? What you're in is called in lust. Okay? Bitch, that's called in lust. You like the fact that you can talk to him. You like the fact that he texts you every morning and sends you morning messages. Bitch, if you need a text every morning, bitch, let email me back your motherfucking phone number. I will text you every morning with some motivational shit, okay? Not a problem. Not a motherfucking problem, all right? But you're in lust. You, you, you just said that you can't wake up without getting a text message from him. First of all, fuck the text messages. I care not to read early in the morning. Second of all, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you're lonely because it's just you and your son, and that's how it is. Let me tell you something. Sometimes just you and your kids is perfect. Honestly, sometimes it just being you and your child is perfect because sometimes when you move someone in your home or you get into a relationship with them, they do become controlling. They do become condescending. They do try to take over some shit. You be sleeping and they be snoring like, damn, will you stop fucking breathing? Like, listen, let me tell you something. This man is 45 years old and you are 25. Don't fucking continue this relationship with this man. He is not interested in you like that. All he's interested in is taking from you and not building a relationship with you, okay, or your son. If he's not trying to build a relationship with your child, he's not trying to build one with you, sweetheart. That means that he don't really care for you because if he really did care for you, he would give your son a chance and he would, you know what I'm saying, try to teach him things as a man. You know what I'm saying? Try to teach you things. All he's doing is fucking backlashing and putting you down and taking money out your pocket or whatever else the fucking you give him next to pussy. Mm -mm. Bitch, you're not in love. you in lust. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that's thinking the same thing. Come on, guys. She has Section 8. That's rent controlled and us also help from the state or the, the state of, of wherever she lives at. It's from the state. Why would you ask her and why would you continuously take from her? If anything, this nigga should be helping you out, building you up. And instead, he's just bringing you down. And you're getting depressed about it. You're getting upset about it. And, you know, you, now you're to the point where you can't, you can't wait for him to call or text you in the morning. You can't wake up. Sweetheart, and you just said you're so dependent on him. You Basically, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. When you break up with somebody and, and if you have strong feelings for them and you've been with them for a amount of time, it does hurt. And you think about them all the time. And then eventually you get over them. Like each day goes by that you slowly forget about them. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel so depressed or you don't feel so sad about it. You get over them. And this is basically what you're going to need to do with this man. He's a user. Girl, please. That nigga would have not even fucking tried to talk to me because I would have let him know at the gate. Fucking look through this shit and get the fuck out. I wouldn't have said it in those words, but you can tell off of the energy that I'm giving you and the look that I want you to fucking get out of my goddamn house already, okay? I don't even want you here, all right? You know what I'm saying? But if you did give him a chance, and but you still realize that the nigga don't like my kids, that nigga would have been ghost a long time ago, for real. So tell Lynn what y'all think about the situation, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me run it down to y'all again. She's on Section 8. Then Section 8 Inspector Vince came over to inspect her dwelling. She introduced her one-and-a-half-year-old to him at the time of his inspection, which I think she shouldn't have done. I don't think you should have introduced your son to him. That's not his business. You know what I'm saying? You just met him. You don't need to introduce your son to him. You don't know. This world is built on crazy people, too. There may be some sane people out there, but there's also some insane. I want to... Let me tell you something. I would not have allowed him to meet my kid in no way shape or form not that fast i would have had to feel him out and let him you know what i'm saying feel him out and see what type of person he is before i allowed him to meet my kid but you know what i'm saying so he's a section 8 inspector he came to inspect lynn's apartment you know for her yearly inspection he met her he started telling her about his past relationship she and he started talking they went out he doesn't really like her kid he just takes from her like you know what i'm saying what would y'all think? You know what I'm saying? Give the diva some advice because I have. What are y'all thoughts on to this? So now we're going to move on to the next real talk. Okay, guys. Hi, Miss April. Haven't sent you one of these since last year regarding an ex. He is an ex for a reason. 
let me just jump into this because it's going to be a long one. So I have been friends with this girl since 2010. We met in college freshman year. Let's call her Destiny. After freshman year, she moved back to our town and we still continue to be friends. No fights, no arguments, just a solid friendship. So we decided last year to go on a trip to Miami, bought the plane tickets in May, and we went on the trip in September. At the time, I was in a relationship and she was single. I'm telling you this for a reason. So we got to Miami and we had so much fun drinking and partying. However, we did fight and all argue almost every day because she wanted to do stuff that I didn't want to do and vice versa. I could tell we were getting annoyed with one another and towards the last couple of days because we didn't really talk like that, but we were determined to get over that and have the most fun that we could basically live their best lives. On the very last day, we decided to drink and drink a lot. Well, I thought it was we, but it was mostly me. There was also these guys who were staying across from us that were real handsome, nice, and had a little bit of money. They even got us into a lot of the clubs for free and even the VIP. Well, anyway, they gave both me and her an edible and we were messed up. Clarify, I was messed up. So you know what an edible is, y'all. The bitch has some weed when... Ugh, them shits will fuck you up, okay? Because trust me, I know. I could barely talk. I was messed up. I could barely talk or function as this was my first edible. Girl, I can mm, preach the choir that I have ever taken. Along with the fact that I do not do any type of drugs. Okay, girl. So, you know, I did smoke weed back then. She invited a few guys over after she took the edible. Um, Meaning... You know, Destiny, Destiny, her friend invited a few guys over. And while waiting for them, I called my other best friend. Let's call her Leisha. <clears throat> while I was telling her, I think these guys, I was telling my friend, Leisha, I think these guys want to have sex with us. And I don't want to because I'm in a relationship. My best friend, Leisha, gets on the phone with Destiny and specifically tells her, to make sure I don't make any mistakes or get myself into trouble while I'm out there. Destiny says, no problem. I won't let anything happen to her. And April, she got a bunch of commas. And April, when the guys came in, all I remember is one sitting on the bed with me. Destiny said she would be out in the hall with the other one and asked me if I was okay. I didn't respond because, like I said, I had an edible, so I was so fucked up. And I couldn't respond. So the guy told Destiny I'd be fine. The next thing I remember is the guy turning off the light and waking up with my vagina, my vagina feeling sore. I instantly knew something happened and started to cry. Destiny promised that something Destiny promised that nothing happened, and I didn't know what I would tell my boyfriend at the time. Destiny instantly told me. She doesn't think anything happened, but she would keep my secret from my boyfriend. Meanwhile, they have each other's phone numbers because of a party they had set for me. So Destiny and we're just going to call her Nikki. The one who's writing me is Nikki. Destiny's um, Nikki and Nikki's boyfriend and her best friend Destiny had each other's phone number because they was playing the party. Well, I guess I didn't have to tell him anything. I guess I didn't have to tell my boyfriend anything. Because the next day when I came back, he broke up with me in a letter stating I'm too good for him and that he doesn't have time for me. When I called Destiny, her response was, I guess it doesn't matter because you had sex with that guy, right? April, what I mean, I wanted to bitch slap her through the phone. I wanted to bitch slap her through the phone. So the few days later, Destiny calls me and leaves a voicemail basically stating she was... <clears throat> she was talking on some chat line and thinks my ex was trying to talk to her on there. Now, all this is too coincidental, and we ended up getting into it and stopped speaking in October of 2017. It is now July, and she has reached out to me to start a friendship again. Should I forgive her? Part of me feels that she has set all this up to try and get my boyfriend, as she coincidentally made it seem like he wanted her along with the fact that he wrote me a breakup letter and blocked me that day that I came back from my trip. Truth be told, my ex would say on occasion that he never thought she was attractive and actually thought she was pathetic because of her bad taste in men. I don't know what to think. All I know is seven years is a long time. 
Could you give me some advice? In all honesty, I miss her, but I clearly cannot trust her with my life. And isn't that what a friend is for? A best friend at that? Mm. Well, so basically, Nikki and her friend Destiny have been friends since 2010. They met freshman year in college. Destiny moved back to the hometown that Nikki was living in. They started hanging out. They never had an argument, a fight. They just had a solid friendship. They decided to take this trip to Miami in September. And, you know, they was partying and have a good life, having a good time, living their best life. But all of a sudden, Destiny and Nikki were getting into arguments every day because Destiny wanted to do what she wanted to do. Nikki wanted to do what she wanted to do. They didn't want to come combine it together and just, you know, you got to agree to disagree sometimes. We can do this today and tomorrow we could do this or we can do this earlier today we could do what you want to do that's what they should have did but anyway that's neither here nor there <coughs> excuse me so basically on the last day they decided they wanted to get drunk like because they was going to drink and drink so that's basically i want to get drunk um there were some gentlemen that lit some guys that were you know renting a room out or renting a hotel room out across from them these same guys were handsome. Like Nikki said, they had a little bit of money. They got them in the clubs and even in VIP. So Destiny decides she's going to invite these guys over so that they can party together on the last day. But prior to that, Nikki took an edible. I don't recall Destiny. Destiny didn't take no edible. She said Destiny didn't take one. She the one that took the edible. And this was her first edible. She doesn't do drugs, so she was fucked up. Trust me when I tell you, you get fucked up because I had a brownie and that shit fucked me up so bad. I just kept eating the whole thing because I didn't feel like the high. And I was high for, and I'm not exaggerating you guys, I kid you not, I was high for over 24 hours. I went to sleep high and then when I woke up the next morning, I was still fucking high and I was lethargic all day long and I was high still. So they will fuck you up. You got to take them shits in little doses and I never again have taken any any, any kind of edible, okay? But anyway, so Destiny invites these guys over from across the hall, you know, so they can party for the last day. Now, mind you, Nikki's already fucked up from the edible. And Nikki's sitting on the bed, and one of the guys from across the hall is sitting next to her on the bed. But Destiny decides she don't want to stay in the room. She's going to go out in the hallway with the other guy. Bitch, why are you going out in the hallway with the other guy? Why you just don't go across the hall to his room? You going to go in the hallway? Bitch, why you just don't sit here? We supposed to be all partying and shit. That, to me, seemed like a setup, but whatever, we're going to continue on with this. So Nikki basically calls her other best friend, Leisha, and says to her, yo, I think these dudes from across the hall want to have sex with us, and I'm not trying to have sex with him because I'm already in a relationship, and I just don't want to have sex with him. Leisha gets on, Leisha, Leisha tells her, we'll put Destiny in the phone. She tells Destiny, don't let shit happen to her, don't let her do nothing she's supposed to be doing, et cetera, et cetera. Destiny said, basically, I got her, she's going to be okay. Well, now, all of a sudden, all Nikki know is next day she wake up, all she remember is the lights went off. The next day she wake up and her fucking pussy is sore as hell. And her friend is talking about, oh, I don't think nothing happened. Well, your secret is safe with me. But meanwhile, Destiny, you got my boyfriend's phone number because y'all done planned a party together. And all of a sudden, as soon the day that I get back, he broke up with me. That, that didn't make no sense. He don't got time for me and I'm too good for him. Like, where, where's that all coming from? And then you meeting him on a supposedly chat line dating site. So, you understand what I'm saying, guys? Nikki's boyfriend broke up with her, left her a letter. Didn't even break up with her face to face. Didn't even fucking text her or call her. The nigga writes a fucking Dear John letter and leaves it for her, okay, to find. So, when she come home, it's over. You too good for me. I don't want to be with you. Damn, nigga, I was gone the whole week or wherever how long I was gone. What the fuck? Was you mad that I left? Nah. And then all of a sudden, Destiny, Nikki's so-called best friend who she went to Miami with, calls her up a few days later right after the breakup and says, I think your boyfriend is on a chat line. A dating chat line was trying to get with me. So they arguing and they haven't spoken since. Okay? They haven't spoken. Now, Destiny reaching out to Nikki, talking about she wants to mend the relationship, that she wants to be friends. But Nikki said, you know, she misses her, but she can't trust her with her life. And aren't best friends supposed to be able to trust each other? Let me tell you something. If you can't trust somebody with your life, bitch, don't fuck with them. That's the number one rule. If you are friends with somebody 
and you know for a fact that you cannot trust them with your life, then there is no reason for you to be friends with this individual. Like dead ass serious. For all you know, she could have set that whole entire shit up. And now that I think of it, I mean, like, I'm not trying to pass judgment on Destiny, but in my heart of hearts, I feel like she did because, for one, you're the one that invited those guys over. And then as soon as they came over, you left out and went in the hallway. Why? We're supposed to be partying together. That that looks like, you know, we're on a double date now because you are you just hooked me up with a guy. Basically, it looked like Destiny tried to hook her up with a piece, with some, with some dick. That's why she left the room. That's what I'm thinking now. Like, did you set her up to get dick down by some fucking random stranger across the hallway? Because the nigga's a random stranger to me. I don't give a fuck if he did help y'all get in the clubs. The nigga's a random stranger. And then you talk about my secret is safe. Your secret is safe with me, but all of a sudden I get back home and my boyfriend broke up with me. And now he's trying to talk to you. Let me tell you something. First of all, the whole arguing shit through the entire time of y'all vacation was childish. Y'all could have just met each other in the middle and agreed to disagree and shared each other's ideas. Because even if, let's just say as an example, she said, well, let's go swim with the dolphins. And you like, well, I want to go, I want to go um, to the museum. I don't want to go swim with no dolphins. And she's like, well, I don't want to go to no museum either. However, what y'all should have did was, all right, let's go swim with the dolphins early in the morning. Like, we, like, because that's when the dolphins be out to swim. And then later on in the evening or the afternoon, we can go to the museum together. Agree to disagree because never knowing that you would have went along with her with swimming with the dolphins and you may have really enjoyed yourself. And she would have went along with you and may have really enjoyed herself at the museum. Those are just examples, but you understand what I'm saying. When y'all are on vacation and y'all go somewhere together, y'all supposed to have fun together and y'all supposed to do things together. And even if one person doesn't like what you want to choose and then the other person doesn't like what you want to choose, combine them together and you have to, you know what I'm saying? Like agree to disagree, meet each other in the middle. Okay, let's go do this. And tomorrow we got to do what I want. It works out like that. But instead y'all was arguing and bickering every motherfucking day, which is like, you know, and then barely spoke. So y'all bitches took your asses all the way to Miami to argue and fight. And then basically to have some man that you don't even know, fuck you, like violate you, violate you. He violated you. And I'm not sure if destiny set the shit up, but you know what? If that was me and that's my friend, my I don't give a fuck if you're just my friend and not my best friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to leave you in no room with some strange dude that you don't even know like that after you done took a, some fucking edible and you know that I'm fucked up. I wouldn't have did that. That's not what friends do. Like, as a friend, I would have not have left you in that situation. Even if you wasn't high and fucked up, I wouldn't have left you in that situation. Because for one, y'all don't even know these dudes. And this bitch left you and went out in the hallway. And you can't even comprehend. You ain't even all there. You, you know what I'm saying? You ain't even sober like that. And this bitch is like, oh, you'll be all right and goes out in the hallway. Like she took a dude's word over yours because you couldn't even answer and tell her, yeah, I'm fine. She took the dude's word. She knew you weren't fucking fine. You could look at somebody's face and tell them that they fucked up and high. Come on now. That's not what friends do. And like you said, you can't trust her with your life. That was your life right there. Because how you know? It could have been worse than what had happened. Okay, you woke up with a sore cooch. That's not a good thing neither. That's violation. But it could have been worse than that. You know what I'm saying? And here she is out in the hallway or whatever the fuck that bitch was at, living her best life with some dude that she don't know. Just because you a thought hoe so I mean that I need to be one. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I don't really think you need to be friends with her. You know, the thing you miss about your friend is probably that y'all used to talk every day and y'all used to hang the fuck out. You'll miss the bullshit. Like, let me tell you something. There probably wasn't no bullshit because, like she said, they never argue. So that's what you're missing, the fun times with her. But let's pop back into reality, sweetheart. Like you just said, you can't even trust that bitch with your life. If I can't trust you with my life, then I can't trust you in general, okay? And if I feel, bitch, that you didn't told my boyfriend that I got fucked or violated by some random dude because I had an edible, then I'm not fucking with you, okay? That wasn't her place to tell your boyfriend that. However, this is the one thing that I want to, to see if you guys are feeling like I'm feeling about the situation. So the day that she came home, 
her boyfriend wasn't even around. He just left her a letter and broke up with her, okay? Funny, how did he find out that she got she was she had sex with a guy? You know what I'm saying? The only person that knew was her and Destiny. So in my heart of hearts, I feel like Destiny did call him or text him and tell him that, yo, she was fucking some dude. However, she didn't say, yo, she's in, um, she got violated and she don't even know what happened. So God knows what Destiny told your ex-boyfriend. She could have told him what I'm thinking she told him was, yeah, she in the room with some dude while you was in the room with the dude or when after, whenever. She probably told him, yeah, she was some dude. She in there fucking some dude. You know what I'm saying? She didn't tell him, oh, she got raped or violated. Because I'm pretty sure if he was told the whole truth and nothing but the motherfucking truth, meaning she woke up and she don't know what happened. She's crying. She's upset. And she feels like she was violated and raped. I don't think he would have broke up with you. What man that really cares for a woman is going to break up with them once they find out that your girlfriend their girlfriend has been sexually violated. Like, seriously. So, what I'm thinking is, your friend, Destiny, that bitch probably want to fuck your ex-boyfriend. Because why would she say that he was on a chat line trying to hit at her? Let me tell you something. First of all, there's millions of bitches in the world. Why the fuck would he just decide to pick you in if he thought she was ugly and pathetic? Like, let's be realistic. Or, how about this? Your friend broke y'all asses up because she ain't got no man and you was in a happy relationship. So she's jealous. Okay. And so now she's going to make it even worse by telling you a few days after the breakup. Yeah. Your boyfriend was on a chat, a dating chat line and he was trying to pick me up. First of all, I don't, you know what? I don't know how long Nikki and her ex-boyfriend was together for, but a few days later after the breakup, why would he be on a dating chat line? Like, he trying to pick his pieces back the fuck up. Like, I don't believe this shit. Like, I think that he was not on a chat line. I think that your friend Destiny told him a bunch of bullshit that you don't know anything about, okay? And I also think that your friend Destiny was jealous. That's the reason why she texted your man or called your man and told him that she was fucking with some dude and then called you days later and told you he was trying to get at her. So that way you and him would never get back together and you could just be friends with her and y'all both could be miserable and lonely and have one another. That's what the fuck she was doing. That's just my take on it. That's how I feel about it. But like I said, that bitch ain't no real friend because if she was a real friend, she would not have fucking left you in that room alone with some fucking random derelict nigga from across the hall. Okay. Especially because you was fucked up. But in general, she wouldn't have left you alone. Okay. She would not have left you alone. And to think that you have to sit here and say, I can't trust her with my life. Sweetheart, if you can email me that and say that you cannot trust her with your life, then there goes your answer. There goes your answer to be a friends with her. Ignore that bitch. I don't give a fuck if you block her. Don't speak to her no more because she's a fucking grimy ass, trifling ass bitch who's real sneaky and she's trying to get and be happy just like you in a relationship or ruin what the fuck you have. So no, you don't need to be friends with her. And no, you don't even need to fucking contact her or converse with her or have any type of communication with her. And I mean, like, listen, me personally, this is what I would do. Like, I mean, even if you ain't trying to get back with your boyfriend, your ex-boyfriend, I would still ask him. So what did she say to you? Do you have, can you forward me the text message? Because she's telling me you was in the chat room and you was trying to get with her. I, you know, I would just ask this information only because I want to know for myself, not to go back in her face, but just to allow me to see like, yeah, you know what? This bitch is grimy. Yeah. April's right. This bitch is grimy. I ain't fucking with her no more. Seven years is a long time. Okay. But bitch, there's been friendships that are way longer than seven years. So seven years may be a long time for some people, but that can be a friendship that's gone and broken. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I've had a friendship with my friend Robin for 11 years almost. Okay. Mumsy was 10 years, excuse me, because Mumsy is 10, she'll be 11 next month. So I met Robin since Mumsy was like a year old and we have been friends since then. We did have our little, you know, break from the friendship or whatever for like a year and a half or whatever, or two years or whatever. But those are friendships and me and her we would never do anything like that to another for one 
even though we, you know, even if we did stop speaking for two years and we got back together as and hung out and did things and went on trips, we would never do that to each other because that's not what real friends do. Real friends are able to learn to love each other and forgive one another. You know what I'm saying? Like she and I do. You know what I'm saying? I never stopped loving her. Even if we wasn't speaking, I like I told you guys, I always love Robin. That's my girl. I love her to death. You know what I'm saying? That 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 issue was because of me why I stopped speaking to her. Because I should have been more woman enough to say, hey, is there an issue? Because I feel like you're throwing shade at me on social media. If I would have just said that, then I'm pretty sure I'd have got my answer. You know what I'm saying? And then this would have all been avoided. But you know what I'm saying? That's what friends do. Sometimes they fight and they argue, but they don't leave another friend vulnerable and open like that to where that could mean some type of trauma onto the friend like she could have stayed in that room with you girl something could have really bad happened like i felt like what happened to you was really bad like for real that's rape to me that's rape if you didn't give him consent you didn't consent to having sex with him and all you remember is the lights going off and then waking up the next day and your pussy's hurting like that that's rape that's rape you know what I'm saying? You don't know he could have put something in your drink or your soda or whatever. You don't, you just don't know. And like, that's, that's just, that's rape. To me, that's rape. And like, I'm not saying it to make you feel any less of a person, but I, I want you to know that that's not your friend. She is no friend to you. If she can leave you in that, that state like that, she's no friend to you. And if you can sit here and tell me that in an email that you can't trust her with your life, then she's not worth your time, sweetheart. And she's definitely not worth your life. There are so many other females out there in this world who are more deserving of a friendship than she will ever be. Yeah, y'all had good times and shit, but you was able to see her true colors. The bitch is jealous, point blank, period. She want what you got or she want to have what you have. And that's the bottom line. And with people like that, that's like sleeping with the enemy. Sweetheart, you don't need to be around anybody like that because if you feel like you always got to be second guessing what she's doing and how she's treating you, then you don't need to have any type of friendship with her at all period period you know what i'm saying so that's my opinion let nikki know how you feel how would y'all handle it if that was a friendship and that that's what happened to y'all how would y'all handle that would how would that make you feel if your friend left you in that situation and then did those things to you behind your back to your boyfriend and stuff? how would you feel i know i probably she said she wanted to bitch slap her through the phone when been no bitch slapping through the phone bitch i'm I'm knocking on your motherfucking door, okay? And we gonna bitch slap, I'm gonna bitch slap the shit out of you. Point blank. You know what I'm saying? So, you guys, I love you. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Leave your comments below for this real talk. And if you got a real talk situation about yourself or somebody you know, please send it to me at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And I hope you guys have a great week. And I will see you on the other side. Oh, and stay diva and people. What? Damn. 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 Damn.